ุนดัมบุญดัมบุญดัมวันเดดัมมัมดัมมัมดัมมัมวันเดสังกัมสังกัมสังกัมวันเดบุญดัมดัมมัมสังกัมวันเดสมันตาชักขวาลิสุอัตรากัจฉันตุเดวตาสันดัมมังมุนิราญาสเสุนันตุสักเกมุกเกดัมดัมมัสสเวเนคาลุอายัมบดันตามดัมมัสสเวเนคาลุอายัมบดันตามดัมมัสสเวเนคาลุอายัมบดันตามนโมทัสสะบาเกวะโตอาเรหะโตสัมมาสัมบุญเดชนะโมทัสสะบาเกวะโตอาเรหะโตสัมมาสัมบุญเดชนะโมทัสสะบาเกวะโตอาเรหะโตสัมมาสัมบุญเดชพันเจหิบิกเวอังเกิอนุกาหิตาสัมมาดิทิมเชตุวิมุตติภลายเจโหติเชตุวิมุตติภลานิสังสัจเจพัญญาวิมุตติภลาเจโหติพัญญาวิมุตติภลานิสังสัจเจขัตมานิพัญเจสีลานุกกหิตาสุตานุกกหิตาสาขาชานุกกหิตาสมาดานุกกหิตาวิปัสสนานุกกหิตาทีฮอมิสตุเด็กสวรรค์ดวันเดเวลดีวันเดเฟอร์เฟกลีอินไลท์นวันสาดูสาดูสาดูเดียร์เฟนซินดัมมะ And today we are going to discuss uh, one of the discourses which comes in Anguttara Nikaya. It is named uh, Anugahita Sutta, the discourse on the supported. We have some kind of support uh, when we go on the path of liberation. In this Sutta. There are five facts which uh, help us to go on the path of liberation. Those five things are very important. We should know those five things that we should not only have the right vision, right understanding. With right understanding, we should have some kind of qualities when we go on this. Path, you know, when we have a address or map, even though we drive, even though we don't walk, we can't reach the destination. Not only enough having a, having an address or map, we should have an effort to go there. These qualities are like that. Here, first of all, I think <coughs> we should understand about the Buddhist path. As I mentioned before, always Buddhism has explained the path how we overcome suffering. Everybody who was born in the world likes uh, get rid of suffering and achieve happiness. That is the main purpose of everybody. Especially by practicing Buddhism in the correct way, we also try to become this position, getting rid of suffering and achieving real happiness. 
That is the main purpose that Buddhism has explained. You know, at the same day when Buddha attained enlightenment, a Vesak full moon day, uh, in the very early morning, Buddha reflected on the nature of the beings. How suffering arises? Buddha reflected, analyzed, and also discovered the reasons why we suffer. From nearest to um, very first course, Buddha realized one by one what are the reasons why we suffer. The main sufferings that we suffer in our daily life. Uh, what we have problems in our day-to-day life? Uh, jara, Vyadi, Marana. Jara means decay or aging. And Vyadi, illnesses. Marana, death. Upayas, lamentation. These are the problems, these are the sufferings that we have in our day-to-day life. Buddha realized the main, the main sufferings that we face in our day-to-day life. In the bottom level, Buddha understood the uh, very special reasons very special sufferings that we find, that we face in our day-to-day life. Jara. Uh, jara. Uh, marana. It means, Jara means decay or aging. Day by day we are going to old age. Day by day we are missing our young age, our strong body, little by little going to old age, weaknesses, whether we like or not, whether we hide or not, that is the reality that we have to face. That is the uh, very uh, uh, surface level sufferings that we have. Then. On that day, the Vesak full moon day, when the Buddha enlightened, early morning, Buddha realized again, why do we have these kind of problems in our life? Decay, sicknesses, death, lamentation, sufferings. Why we suffer these problems? What are the nearest reasons that we face in this situation? Yes, very good. Because we born, we face these problems. The nearest reason of death, illnesses, decay is birth. It says in Buddhism, Jati. Eh? Jati. Jati means birth. Birth is the nearest reason of decay, illnesses, and death. Then again, Buddha realized, examined, reflected on. What's the reason of birth? The nearest reason of birth is bhava. Bhava means becoming or existence. Becoming means eh? becoming means that it is um, very important to understand. When we remember something, 
when we think about something if we think it is there for example when we think our home when we think our parents when we think our vehicle if we think they are in outside this is the bower this is the becoming when we remember our house if we think it is outside actually according to conventional truth it is true it can be seen by anybody so anybody can anybody can see um, those physical things material things but those things are visible because of our mental condition for example when we see that this is the north direction this is the south direction hmm Uh, this is the west direction this is the uh, this is the east direction this is the west direction this is the north direction this is the south direction how direction arise if we are not here are there directions no directions are because of we if we are not here nobody can say this is north direction this is south direction nobody can say it. directions arise as soon as we were born our all experience also like that but sometimes we can say according to conventional truth even though we were not born world could be seen it is true according to conventional truth but when we go to the deep level the ultimate truth everything is here because we are here then when you think about your parents about your uh, friend about your husband about your wife then if you think that is outside it means we are ready to come back don't worry we are in the circle journey we are in the circle of the journey we are not away from the circle of the journey according to conventional truth we can think but while we are thinking according to conventional truth if we are intelligent to reflect on ultimate truth then we are not ready to come back when we think something if we are intelligent that incident arises at the moment because of my thinking then we are away from the circle for example when you go to the mirror before you see the mirror you never think that my reflection is there do you think that before you go to the mirror your reflection is there can you understand what i am saying before you go to the mirror do you think that your reflection is there we never think we know very well as soon as we go to the mirror we can see the reflection in the mirror it was not there before we go our all experience also like that even though reflection was not there before we went we go to the mirror again and again we don't worry about mirror because my reflection was not there i never hate 
if you are intelligent our all experience like this situation then you can go to your house you can meet your children you can meet your husband or wife but you know very well when you think when you see when you meet at that moment this experience arises we don't think before i think see or taste or smell or think it was not there so as soon as we think we see we smell we taste we touch we remember then that incident is there before this experience it was not there as the experience it doesn't remain can you understand what i'm saying the reflection of the mirror is the very good example for our entire experience in our life even though our reflection was not in the mirror before we went we never break we never break um the mirror and uh, we never get angry with mirror again and again we go to the mirror but we have no problem the reflection which is in the mirror we have not no fear we have no struggling we have no any other kind of defilements about the figure about the reflection which is in the mirror because it, because of this understanding because of this intelligence we have no problems about the reflection of the mirror but for our needs again and again we go to the mirror our all experience also like that this is the bhava if somebody thinks that when we when we remember when we think when when we smell uh, see or hear something it was there and also it is outside that is the nature of bhava or becoming so it is uh, expecting expecting like you're expecting to your house be there for your car actually expecting is not the not the fault we don't we don't need to give up expecting for example even though you expect or not whether you expect or not when you go to the mirror you can find the reflection in the mirror like that when we remember something that is in the world if we have this understanding we can have sometimes expecting for example after somebody uh, becomes enlightenment he can expect his mom he can go to meet meet his mom for example buddha went to uh, went to uh, went to say some dhamma to his uh, father and mother it is not the fault what is the fault if he think before i go to visit my mom he she was there that is the fault for example when we go to the mirror with our pet with our dog what does he uh, what does he mention seen we know very well as soon as i go to the mirror my figure is here but that innocent pet he thinks that before he went there somebody was there 
even after he go away, still it remains he may think. When we go to visit our mom, we are like that. We are like that pet. Before we go to visit my mom, I may think that my mom is there. So, so that's expecting. That's the meaning of the word expecting. So if you, you think that she's there, so you expect. Yes, we can say that it is expecting, but it doesn't mean that we don't think, uh, we think that mom is not there. We can see mom, but the concept of mom arises when we see, when we meet, when we smell, when we hear, we fawn. Not only going to see my mom, but when you call your mom, then it is also like go to the mirror. Not only by eyes, we have six senses. By any sense, we can meet that person. By seeing, by listening, by tasting, by hearing, by smelling, by touching, by remembering, there are six ways that we can find, we can meet our mom. Not only looking at the mirror. So if you believe in impermanence, you understand that she's not there, as you're looking at, you're creating that image. And then it's yes. the rise and cease at the same moment, right? Yes. On the other side, we, we don't think that mom is not there. It is also an extreme. If I think mom is there, that is also an extreme. If I think mom is not there, that is also one of the extremes. Without going to these extremes, Buddha has explained the dependent origination. What is the nature of the dependent origination? When conditions arise, when conditions are together, we can experience anything. When conditions go away, the experience immediately ceases without remaining anything. This is a very deep concept, but however, we should understand this reality. If we like to overcome suffering completely, other old solutions are temporary. Other old solutions are impermanent. This is the permanent solution on the path of liberation. Baba, it is very important. If we are in this concept, in this teaching, at that moment if we die, then we are not ready to come back. At the moment immediately when we die, we finish the journey of the samsara. Becoming means we are ready to come back. When you think you are some kind of relative, if you think that is outside, and it means that we are ready to go there. When we look at our reflection in the mirror, actually, even though we can see the reflection in the mirror, the reasons are here. The reasons are here. Because of I am here, because I am here, reflection is there. If I am not here, there is no reflection. Our mom or dad or anybody that we have is in the world because of my thinking. But don't worry, according to conventional truth, everything is in the world. Before you were born, there was a world. When we die, the world remains. It is true, according to conventional truth. In this concept, we can do merits. 
we can go to the heavenly realm, we can go to the Brahma realm, we can, we can come back to the human realm by practicing some good deeds like generosity, virtue or meditation. But until we go away from this concept, the Bhava becoming, this misconcept, we are in the circle of the samsara. This is the cause of birth. Becoming means, when we think something, when we hear something, when we taste something, if we think this is outside, That is the, that is the thing, that is the ability that we can come back to the world. You know, don't worry again and again, we will discuss this same thing, okay? Every day, you know, we go to, uh, we usually discuss something and little by little, we go to the deep level. Okay, if you participate to the classes regularly, you can understand, don't worry. Then, there is a reason for becoming. <laughs> what is the reason of becoming? Okay. The nearest reason of becoming is Upadana. Yes, you are good. Clinging. Upadana. Upadana. Upadana means clinging. Very good. What is the reason of Upadana or clinging? Trusna or craving. Uh, Tanha or craving. Oh, attachment, we can say attachment, desire, uh, lustful desire, greed, we can say some synonyms. What is the reason of tanha or craving? The nearest reason of tanha or craving is vedana or feelings, good or bad feelings. Uh, we have not only painful feelings, but we have some fruitful, very good feelings. Both of them are in the same way. The craving arises because of because of feelings. Vedana, yes. Vedana. Uh, feelings. What is the reason of feeling? Why feelings arise? Feelings arise because of senses. We have six... Sorry, please wait a minute. The Vedana arises. Vedana arises because of passa or contact or impression. Pasta. Pasta means, pasta means, uh, impression, or contact. Uh, contact, or impression. Impression. How impression arises Impression arises because of six senses. Like our eye, ear, nose, these are the senses which help us to arise past or impression. Salayatana. Huh? Salayatana means, salayatana means six senses. Six senses. What is the reason of six senses? Buddha realized again. What is the cause of six senses? 
it arises because of nama roopa uh, nama roopa means nama means mind roopa means roopa means matter mind and matter mm-hmm. mind and matter and uh, here it is a, it, it has a very special definition this mind is not only consciousness it has some kind of difference i will explain it usually you can understand here it includes that um specially uh, the mental formation mental formation and how nama roopa or mind and matter arises mind and matter arises because of consciousness so vijnana consciousness eh because of consciousness mind and matter arise and also what is the reason of consciousness here especially in this level we have a very special part of mind it says as uh, perception eh uh, perception and in what is the reason of vedana avijnana or consciousness here again it says that mental formation mental formation mental formations means sankhara ha eh? sankhara why sankhara or mental formations arise ignorance of avidya avidya is the very first cause the very first root of all kind of for all kind of reason avidya or ignorance <laughs> what is the ignorance what is the nature of the ignorance eh what is the nature of the ignorance as i mentioned in bhava it is very close to bhava in this situation bhava means when we think something if we think it is outside like the pet things that his reflection is there when his reflection is there he may think that there is another person there we also like that when we see something we may think that is there actually we can find something outside but that concept that understanding arises according to our mental formation for example when we look at this statue we are very faithful we respect it but other person other religious person sees that statue um he doesn't respect when we when we have some kind of experience that experience arises according to our mental condition when your son does some misbehavior you may get angry but when that scene is seen by other person in your neighborhood he or she doesn't get angry you know although we find we meet some physical things in the bottom level we have only the mental experience that is our experience in the final level for example when you add something to your coffee milk coffee water sugar one by one you can add to your tea or coffee but finally you have 
another thing as a mixed our experience also like that although we see some physical thing outside but the experience is different according to our mental situation according to our point of view and um, especially here we should know the different difference of ignorance from bhava bhava means that when we tin for when we see or remember or taste or uh, smell something if we think it can be seen outside and also as soon as we think that it is outside automatically we have an attachment we can go away from the attachment if we have this misunderstanding here in ignorance that if we think before this experience it was there and also if we think as the experience it remains that is the ignorance that is very close to this meaning however if we look at something which ignorant mind then immediately this all things has have arise we have no excuse we have no break as soon as if we are ready to reflect on anything as it is it means we are go away from all of these reasons that is the interesting thing that is why buddha said if somebody is clever to reflect on anything from these things and also he is ready to overcome all of these reasons of the circle of the samsara and the very first day when buddha enlightened on a vesakul moon day on may month before 2600 years ago early morning buddha realized this process again and again he examined reflected realized analyzed and finally he discovered and also finally he could go away from ignorance completely then because of his previous spiritual development he was very intelligent then he could attain enlightenment overcoming ignorance um, so it doesn't mean that with ignorance you have to be indifferent with other thing, things for example if there is a beautiful garden you can enjoy the garden you can watch and everything but it doesn't mean that you have to be indifferent you don't have to you know ignore the garden and you want to see it. you can enjoy it actually even arahantas when we when they were in the jungles it has a beautiful flowers it has very beautiful waterfall actually they enjoyed it is not a enjoying with the attachment we can see these flowers buddha said the clingings are not outside the flowers has no desire no clinging clinging or desire or craving arises in our mind outside things are very innocent they have no emotions according to our mental conditions we have attachment we have craving we have greed then if we can see something if we can experience something without without uh, greedy mind 
then we have no attachment. We have no dependence. We have no unwholesome emotions in our mind because our mind is so completely pure. And when we see something we know very well, we have full mindfulness, full awareness. This experience immediately arises and immediately it ceases. Then when we hear something, that previous experience has ceased. Then when we smell something, that my sound has ceased. Every moment I have new experience. It is very fast. It can be understood only by intelligence. In physical world, we can divide, we can divide them. All of them can be understood by our intelligence, by listening the Buddha's message. And if somebody is very intelligent, wise, who has practiced this doctrine again and again in his previous lives, as soon as somebody explains this nature, he could analyze, he could understand this message immediately because he has practiced this message in his previous life. But there were some persons who have, who had not liked that intelligence, they had to practice this life it again and again. And they could attain some kind of spiritual statement according to their effort, according to their intelligence, according to their dedication. There are several reasons which help us to become this understanding. Not only listening to this message, but also the effort, the courage, dedication is also very important. Then, with this understanding, first of all, by sitting on the conventional truth, we try to overcome negative thoughts unwholesome thoughts at the very first level with the understanding of karmic law in intelligence we know very well whatever we do with intention according to our intention we will have good or bad results when we have this understanding always we try to go away from evils like killing others stealing and uh, lying those are the uh, negative emotions, unwholesome emotions. At the very beginning, in the first level, we try to go away from evils because we know very well when we have these kind of negative emotions, we will have the negative results. As intelligent persons, we don't like to get suffering. Then. At the very first level, as much as we can, we try to overcome negative thoughts, greed, anger, delusion. For that, at the very first level, we practice generosity to get rid of greed. And also we practice loving kindness to get rid of anger. And also we practice meditation and listening to what Buddha taught and we do some discussions to get rid of, to overcome ignorance or delusion. This is the very first level with the knowledge of the karmic law. And also the second level, we reflect on the impermanence again and again. And day by day, we practice impermanence. Our I is impermanent. What is the nature of the impermanence of our I? Somebody may say that this I someday can, uh, can be destroyed, can be blind. Actually, that can be understood by anybody. We, do, we don't need the Buddha to understand this thing. Buddha appeared to the world to explain the real meaning of the impermanence of our I. 
What is the real meaning of the impermanence of eye, or ear, or nose, or tongue, or body, or mind? This eyes arises at the moment when forms appear. When my consciousness arises. For example, this sound. This sound arises because of my ears, consciousness, sound, my fingers, waves. Because of all these conditions, I can hear sound. When those conditions go away, the sound ceases immediately. Our eyes are also like that. Our eye also like that. This physical eye can be seen from birth to death. But the eye that Buddha says is not just like that. What is the eye that Buddha said that's impermanent? When form are here, when I open my eye with consciousness, that I arises at the moment. That I cannot be seen. This physical I can be seen. But the I which sees this form cannot be seen. This physical I can be seen. But the ability of I cannot be seen. This physical ear can be seen, but the I which realizes this sound cannot be seen. This is the nature of our life. If we are intelligent to understand this reality, again and again we reflect on impermanence, applying our entire life, especially our senses. Then, if we are in this understanding, at that moment be sure we have overcome sickness, death, illness, decay, aging. We can find the old person when we compare that person. Uh, now uh, you may 40 years, uh, last year you were so young. We compare both persons as the same person. That is why we are going to all age. But if we have only the present moment, Reflecting on impermanence, in that situation, we can find a person who is in the old age. We can find a person who died. We are completely on the intelligent position with the understanding of impermanence, with the knowledge of the dependent origination. That is why Buddha said, Nibbana is Ajara Amara. Ajara means no jara. Ajara means no decay, no aging. Amara means no death. The enlightened person, we can see he passes away. That is declared by ourselves. But he has overcome death. He faces physical death, but mentally he has overcome the death of suffering. He can face the physical death, but he has overcome the suffering of the death before we die. That is the interesting thing in Buddhism. The other all religions have declared their liberation after death, but Buddhism, if we can realize 
and attain the enlightenment, we can overcome death while we are living, before the death. That is the interesting thing. Then this path, day by day, we should go forward with this understanding and also the understanding of this situation is said as Samadhiti or right understanding. Um, yes? for, for that to happen, we have to have conscious right? consciousness. Sorry? Um, the theory of, of being ignorant is because we are conscious on, on things that we have. For example, we are conscious of the picture. Um, so we have a conscience. So when we don't have consciousness, say we're sleeping, and we are subconscious. We are not seeing, we are not feeling, but our mind is subconsciously running. Actually, we have six, not only one consciousness, we have six consciousness. Eye consciousness, ear consciousness, like that, nose consciousness, and also mind consciousness. There are six consciousness. When we sleep, we have mind consciousness. There also we have some kind of consciousness. That is why we are dreaming. We can't control our dreams. When we see a fear dream, we can control it. If we are clever, we should have an ability to control our dreams. But the enlightened person has no dreams. <laughs> His dreams and the real world is same. He has no dreams. And uh, even though you are sleeping and also when you sleep, if you die, do you think that you are not be reborn? We will be reborn even though we die in the sleeping. What is the reason? Even though we are sleeping, our consciousness is not sleeping. It is awakening. Then that is why we can't we can't run the reality, from the reality. We have to face the reality with, a, with an active um, um, process. And uh, if we can, actually consciousness is not the problem. Even Arhantas have consciousness. But that consciousness is like you know, it, it is an intelligent consciousness. Our consciousness, when we see something, that consciousness is with ignorance. That when we identify something, it has ignorance. That is why we compare it with the before the previous thing. For example, when as soon as you see me, with your consciousness, you may think that now I am seeing the Bhante who, whom I met last week. <laughs> then you find a, you meet the same person. But the Arhant finds the difference. He, he sees the difference. When we go to the mirror, just now, it is same that when we went there in the morning, but it is completely physically different. The shadow is same. When we compare both of them, we can see some kind of similarities, but it is a new thing. This sound and this sound, when you compare, it is same. 
but it is completely different. Because of conditions are same, we can see the same sound, but it is different. Okay, with this, this is the Samadhiti, right understanding. We should have not only Samadhiti, right understanding for helping to this situation. We should have five things, five supporters. That is said in um, Anugahita Sutta. Anugahita means supported. The discourse on the supported. Now we are come to our present uh, theme. <laughs> okay? Now we start our uh, lesson. Okay? <laughs> Buddha said here, with right understanding, we should get support from five factors, five phenomena. One of them is right vision is supported, helped, guarded by moral virtue, selanu gahita, having the understanding of samadhiti, having samadhiti is like a like an address or map for having this after we have this map or address samaditi we should get support from discipline or moral virtue silanu gahita we should develop our discipline in our speech and behavior it is very important not only for our liberation or deliverance, but for our day-to-day life. When we have good discipline in our speech and behavior, actually we are honored, we are respected in the society with the people. Even though we were born alone, even though we will die alone, we have to live with the society. Having a good morality, moral virtue is beneficial for a honorable life. And also Buddhism says if we have good discipline, it helps us to earn much money. Not only it is beneficial for the spiritual life, it is beneficial for our conventional life day-to-day life too. Especially on the path of liberation, at the very beginning, we should have good discipline in our speech and behavior. It is useful for going to the path. Not only having discipline that Buddha said, Sutanu Gahita. Sutanu Gahita means right vision is supported by great learning. Education. What is the education that we should have? The education about the, the dependent origination, cause and effect for noble truth. Again and again we have to increase our knowledge about the process of our life, the reality of the life. The four noble truths, dependent origination, five spiritual faculties, Seven enlightenment factors, eightfold path, uh, and uh, three characteristics, hmm, come and rebirth. Actually, everything is very important. Especially the understanding of impermanence, depending on, on dependent origination. Pati Sampad, Ida Pachata. Pati Sampad is the heart of Buddhism. That is why Buddha said, your Patita Samupada Pasati Sodhamma Pasati, he who sees Patita Samupada, the dependent origination, sees the Dhamma. Your Dhamma Pasati Soma Pasati, he who sees the Dhamma, sees the Buddha. The real way to see the Buddha is 
understanding of the dependent origination then we have to listening to this message again and again to be permanent not only one you know in any spiritual age who are we have to listening to it again and again day by day we have to clear our knowledge clean our knowledge we have to improve our knowledge sutanu gahita means the right vision is supported by listening to this message learn into this message sutanu gahita sutta means listening to that is the second one the third one sakachanu gahita right vision is supported by dhamma discussion not only listening but when we have some questions we can ask somebody who is more knowledgeable than we are having a good friend is a very good virtuous thing that we have if we don't have good friends who explain the buddha's message that is the biggest worst thing that we have in our life sakachanu gahita we have to discuss when we meet some our with our friends when we meet our friends we have to discuss these things uh, what is your understanding about the five aggregates uh, how do you explain impermanence peace Uh, please explain me the six senses and the nature of the six senses please explain me the dependent dependent origination ignorance cause and effect arising and ceasing then again and again we have to discuss these topics which help us to uh, understand the world reality this is the nature of our life we have to understand our life as it is in the correct way you know all other people not only scientists uh, philosophers but even religious all other religious people also explain the world according to conventional truth what is that before we were born there was a world after we will die the world remains the foundation of all teachings of all scientists philosophies religious people teachings all teachers everybody explain their teachings depending on the conventional truth buddhism also has some kind of teachings in conventional truth but special thing is in buddhism the dependent origination that's the heart of buddhism understand of impermanence the rising and ceasing everything is impermanent means everything arises at the moment when our consciousness arises it immediately arises and it immediately ceases every moment is new because of our ignorance we have some old things we are not new even though we are in the first of january still we are old we are not refresh we are not new until we realize this reality and also buddha said we have to get some support from tranquility or concentration samadhanu gahita we get some support from samadhi samadhi means concentration or tranquility by practicing some kind of meditation techniques we have to train our mind to live in the present moment focus in particular object particular or some thought like practicing breathing meditation practicing loving kindness meditation we trained our mind to live in the present moment and also we 
train our mind to live in a particular object, hold some thought for a long time, then our mind is unshaken. With the concentrated mind, we reflect on impermanence again. That is said as Vipassana Nugahita. Fifth one. Right understanding is supported by inside, insight meditation. That is also very important. Vipassana means reflecting on impermanence, arising and ceasing again and again. As we mentioned before, Samadhi is, we can say it under the name as mindfulness. Mindfulness and Samadhi are together. And developing mindfulness and concentration is like improving our, increasing our GPA. If we are clever to increase the time of practicing impermanence or vipassana, it is like improving our IQ, intelligence quotient. This is the Buddhist GPA. This is the Buddhist IQ. In the society, even though some people's IQ and GPA are in high, actually still they are suffering. But on this path, deliverance path, as much as we can improve our GPA and IQ, mindfulness and intelligence, mindfulness and insight meditation, it means Gradually, we are overcoming suffering and also we are reaching the final destination, enlightenment, deliverance, Nibbana. That is the real proficiency as intelligent persons that we should develop day by day. For that, we have to listen to this message again and again. And we have to develop our right vision correct vision, right understanding. And also we should get support from these five things. Sila Nugahita, uh, supported by moral, virtue or discipline. Um, Sutta Nugahita, supported by listening or learning. And uh, Sakacha Nugahita, supported by discussing and uh, samadhanu gahita supported by concentration or tranquility and supported by inside vipassananu gahita we should have not only right understanding right vision that we are we are going to but we should have moral life listening to this message again and again Dhamma discussion, concentration, and also inside meditation. These five things are very important. Those five things are beneficial on the path of liberation. Day by day, we should try to improve these qualities in our life with the understanding of the Buddha's message. Okay? Uh, have you any question? Yes. More like a scenario. Let's say... For example, um, let's say we're in an airplane and then there's an accident, the airplane crashes, and then I end up in an island. Maybe there's people, maybe there's no people. But I remember Buddhism, but I don't remember specifically all the details of the Four Noble Truths or the Eightfold Path. But if I remember these two main things, I would be in the right path, that would be learning dependent origination, which would be the wisdom, and being mindful in the present moment. Is, is that would be like a, a good summary? Let's say I know all the other things, but I don't remember them. But if I remember these two, would be a good way for me to practice if I'm in an island and I don't have anything? Yes, and sometimes we can reach the island. In the sky, our lives can be finished. Uh-huh. However, According to Buddhism, the real safety of our life, the real refuge of our life is reflecting on impermanence. Buddha said, 
if somebody can reflect on impermanence at the end of his life his death and enlightenment is in the same time if he can reflect on this reality deeply at that moment even at the death we can finish the sansaric journey but it is not easy for that during our lifetime we should be in this vision that is very important sometimes some people are um, going to practice this message at the end of their life but it is not successful if we have packed this message in our during in our duration of our lifetime then it is very easy to reflect at that very complex situation then we can say when we die but the real refuge is reflected on this impermanence even though we can't achieve enlightenment but we will have a better life where we can practice this message again that is the very special thing that we receive even though we were born in a very far away we are coming back finding this message like you you were born in brazil you came here and i met you in the college <laughs> you come here like that it doesn't matter where we were born if we have practice this message in our sansaric journey we are coming back to the place yeah i feel like now after like one year i my knowledge stand was like i didn't understand everything but now i feel like mm-hmm. i know mm-hmm. like a lot mm-hmm. because of you know seven years so like now it's really amazing actually you should uh, you should um, you should be grateful to your previous good actions not for us <laughs> uh you received everything because of your previous life wishes and merits that is why you are here that is why you could do these kind of activities and uh, it doesn't matter whether we are we were born sometimes um, we can be born in a other religious background actually if we have this experience then we are coming back to the place we are in buddhism hmm. okay uh, thank you for your good attention and participation i appreciate all of you okay by the power of all these merits may our departed relatives also receive these merits and all may they enhance their spiritual energy and may they also attain final bliss of liberation please you remember uh, you are beloved departed relatives and may all of them receive these merits and may they have a better life and finally may all of them attain final bliss of liberation with that intention let's transfer these merits to our beloved departed relatives too idam me nyati nam ho to sukita hon to nyata yo idam me nyati nam ho to sukita hon to nyata yo idam me nyati nam ho to sukita hon to nyata yo by the power of all these merits that we accumulated at the moment may guardian deities and angels also receive these merits and may they enhance their spiritual energy may they keep their eye on you too may they also attain final bliss of liberation with that intention let's transfer these merits to guardian deities and angels to recite in this tensa akasatha ca bhumatha deva naga mahindika ಪುಣ್ಯಂಥನುಮೋದಿತ್ವಾಂರಕ್ಕು ಸಾಸನ ಆಕಾಶಟ್ಟಾಚಾಮಹಿಖಾ ಪುಣ್ಯಂಥನುಮೋದಿತ್ವಾಂರಕ್ಕು ದೇಸನ 
ตาคาสัตตาจะบุมมัตตาเดวานากามหิตติคามปุญญังตังอนุโมดิตวาจิรังรักขันตุตวังสดาบายดาพาวเวอร์ออฟออลดิสเมริสเมยูบีเวลแ